Hey, sinner. And I stopped. I said, who knows me around here? <laughs> Today, and we have with us as our special guest, Brother R. W. Schambach. Brother Schambach, thank you so much for joining me on Miracles today. Well, it's a pleasure for me, Robin. Well, it's a it's a great privilege to have you on the program, and I wanted to go right to when the Lord first called you. If you could tell me about that. I was a young lad working in a farmer's market in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And I was running home from work one night when there was a preacher with a loudspeaker. And I was running, I said, I don't want to hear no preacher tonight. <laughs> and he hollered in that microphone, hey, sinner. And I stopped. I said, who knows me around here? <laughs> one thing I knew, I was a sinner doesn't say go out there and tell somebody to confess they're a sinner and tell them they need Jesus and then strong arm them, headlock them into praying a prayer and then move on to the next one. But he didn't die because I was a sinner. He died because I was a lost son. Jesus didn't come into the world because you were such a grotesque sinner. He came into the world because you were a son that lost your identity. Man, you ought to stop, just slow down sometime and really think about that. Hey, sinner! that God became a man. He must think a lot about the potential of who he can be inside of men. Hey, sinner! If he died for man, if he had to become a man to die to restore man back, he must think a lot of that potential. Hey, sinner! My whole life growing up, I was told that Jesus died on the cross because I was a sinner. And it left me a forgiven sinner. And that's the first thing you've got to realize, that you're a sinner and you need help. Nobody ever told me that he died on the cross to restore my purpose and potential and destiny, that he actually died on the cross because he saw great value in what I could be when he lived inside of me. Of course he had to die because I sinned, but he didn't die because I was a sinner. He died because I was a lost son. See, the cross doesn't expose your sin. It removes your sin to expose your potential and your value. But my whole life, I was taught a sin-conscious gospel. Hey, sinner. I love you, man. No pressure, man. I love you, man. What's your name? DeAndre. DeAndre. Mm -hmm. DeAndre, you're amazing, man. You are. You have amazing purpose, dude. You're amazing. You're scared. You're scared. You're scared. You're scared. You're scared. You're amazing. Take a man or woman of God to point out the trash in someone's life. It takes a man or woman of God to pull the gold out of what the world says is trash. Or like the other day we went on the street and there was Sorry. these Wiccans. And uh -huh. I said to him, I said, hey, I said, how are you guys doing? Like I said, Jesus thinks you're amazing. Well, we don't like Jesus. And he loves you and you're amazing. Jesus loves you. Yeah? Yeah, he does. Me too. Bless you, man. All right. He loves you. Okay. I love that he's thinking about you all the time. And it's just as important if you tell somebody that God loves them and they're amazing as it is if you pray for them and they get out of a wheelchair. I'm like, look, you have value, you have purpose. Yeah. You don't understand what Jesus thinks about you. You're not the product of your life. Hey, sinner! And I stopped. I said, who knows me around here? God's so impressed and so amazed by you. Dude, God loves you, man. You're amazing. Hey, sinner! But I just want to tell you that this year is going to be an amazing, different year for you. And God's about to do something really cool in your life. Sweet. All right? Keep an eye out. I love I you. Definitely. Bless you, girl. You, you too. Thanks for your time. No, thank you. All right, bless you. That preyed on my depravity to try to get me to say I'm sorry. The goodness of God leads men to change. You don't, you don't have to come at somebody's depravity. You teach what they're called to be and created to be. And the goodness of God gets into you and brings change to you. It's the goodness of God that leads somebody to repentance. 
It's his goodness. It's, it's not until someone sees the goodness of God that they even come to a place of repentance in their heart. Uh, where the Samaritan woman was, remember what he said like to her, like, give me, you know, give me a drink of water, right? And he's talking about the man that you're with. You know, as a matter of fact, you've been married five times. The man you're with is not your husband, this and that and the other thing. And we, we look at that and we're like, you know, he's pointing out her sin. But what, what he was doing was he was giving her something that only God could know about her to get to her heart. You can beat someone up all day. You can right hook people and left hook people and condemn them and tell them this, that, and the other thing. And what you will do is build a wall and make them angry at God. Because the reason why I never came to Christ when I was growing up is because I never saw Christ in anybody. So why would I want what they had? There ought to be something amazingly beautiful and blameless about your life. There ought to be something so attractive, man, that the world is like... Some people do not respond. I did. It doesn't say go out there and tell somebody to confess they're a sinner and tell them they need Jesus and then strong arm them, headlock them into praying a prayer and then move on to the next one. I've never seen one scripture in my Bible, reading my Bible, and I've read my Bible. I've never seen... A scripture that said the reprimand of God is what changes a man's life. Hey, sinner. And that's the first thing you've got to realize, that you're a sinner and you need help. People always say, well, it ain't all about the love of God. It's about the judgment of God, too. I've never seen the judgment of God transform a life. And he went into the story of how Christ died on the cross and carried our sins for us. And he didn't preach too long, but he prayed and I made an altar out of the curb. Mm. I knew no theological terms, just a young man. But when I got up, I had people listening to the same thing. They were laughing at me. Yes. But I responded to it. Some people do not respond. I did. Hey, sinner. I knew no theological terminology, but I knew that there was a change that took place. Yes. I didn't know what it was. To put it in everyday language, it felt like I took a shower on the inside. Yes. Because they think you're just going to tell them they're a wretched sinner and need to change or they're going to go to hell. Or if they don't be pray this prayer, you know, they're in trouble because they're a sinner. Man, God didn't send his son just because of sin, Randy. He, he knew that if he could get the sin away, he could get to what he created in the first place. And that's me and him. It doesn't say go out there and tell somebody to confess they're a sinner. Hey, sinner! And tell them they need Jesus and then strong arm them, headlock them into praying a prayer, and then move on to the next one.